facts you might not know From the biggest flops to the greatest hits This is Trash Can Tempest Hi everyone, my name is Beaton I'm a raccoon, and this is my show, Trash Can Tidbits, where I sling pop culture facts that you may or may not know. Thanks for tuning in. Last time, I asked the question, which song was originally used in the beginning of the first Guardians of the Galaxy film? The answer is, Hooked on a Feeling by Blue Swede. Though that particular song was not used in the opening credits, it was used in the trailers, and even the film itself, when the characters are escorted into the Kiln space prison. It has become an essential part of the first movie's marketing campaign. Now, with that settled, let's get started with fact number one. Did you know that there was one scene from the original movie version of Carrie that was filmed, but wasn't used? The scene in question appears in Stephen King's book as a flashback wherein Carrie White, as a three-year-old, spies on a topless teenage girl sunbathing on the yard next door. Carrie approaches the teen curiously, asking what those are pointing at the girl's bare breasts, and noting that her mother calls them dirty pillows. Carrie's mother, Margaret, then comes storming out of the house, yelling religious scriptures at the teen and her mother, calling them sinners and dragging Carrie back inside. The young girl, frightened, then uses her burgeoning psychic powers to rain rocks from the sky, damaging the exterior of the White House. The scene was filmed for the movie with Sissy Spacek playing the three-year-old Carrie. However, it was deleted when it was realized that Spacek was obviously too old to convincingly play a three-year-old, in addition to already playing her as a teenager. Like, could you really not find an actual child to play a child? Come on. Fact 2. Did you know that the movie musical Flower Drum Song, released in 1961, is the only movie based on a Rodgers and Hammerstein stage musical to not be released by 20th Century Fox? The film, which takes place in San Francisco and was one of the first mainstream movies to have an all-Asian cast, was released by Universal Pictures instead of Fox, which made all the other stage-to-film versions. The show originally opened on Broadway in 1958 and ran for 600 performances. The movie rights were bought by a producer from Universal named Ross Hunter, best known at the time for making a series of romantic comedies starring Doris Day and Rock Hudson. At the time of its release, Flower Drum Song was groundbreaking for providing an inside look at Asian communities in the mid-20th century which were about to embrace American culture. Fact 3. Sticking with Rodgers and Hammerstein for this next fact, did you know that the acclaimed songwriters collaborated on nine Broadway shows? The origins of their partnership began in the early 1940s when New York's Theatre Guild wanted to make a musical version of Lynn Riggs' stage play Green Grow the Lilacs, about life in turn of the century in Oklahoma. At the time, both Richard Rodgers and Oscar Hammerstein had different songwriting partners. Rodgers created shows like Pal Joey with his partner, Lorenz Hart, and Hammerstein created Showboat with composer Jerome Kern. Hart and Kern were not interested in the Lilacs material, and eventually, r collaborated with each other for their first show, which would end up being Oklahoma. Their partnership lasted from 1942 until Hammerstein's death in 1960, and the pair created nine Broadway musicals, six of which were made into films. Fact 4. Did you know that Alfred Hitchcock originally intended to use a helicopter for the opening shot of his movie Psycho? He had wanted the first shot of the film as one long take of the city of Phoenix flying towards the hotel where Marion Crane and her boyfriend Sam Loomis were having an afternoon fling. His intention was to use a helicopter for the setup, but unfortunately the camera mounts at the time were not as secure as today's and drones didn't exist either. It was just too unstable to get some usable footage. Hitchcock instead achieved his opening shot through a series of wide panning shots of the city and dissolving effects to eventually go through the window into the hotel. The Psycho remake from 1998 directed by Gus Van Sant was finally able to have Hitchcock's original vision filmed the way it was intended. Fact 5. Did you know that the mutant character Nightcrawler from the X-Men franchise was written out of the third movie through a video game? The movie, X2, saw the debut of fan-favorite character Kurt Wagner, a.k.a. Nightcrawler, the blue mutant who is capable of teleportation, played by Alan Cumming. 
Cumming had to sit through endless makeup sessions to play the character, which he ultimately did not enjoy. I mean, who would, honestly? I can't imagine how long it must have taken Rebecca Romain or Jennifer Lawrence to turn themselves into Mystique over and over again. Anyway, Cumming decided to bow out of reprising the role of Nightcrawler for X-Men The Last Stand. As such, X-Men The Official Game, released in 2006 for all major consoles, featured Nightcrawler, voiced by Cumming himself, as one of three playable characters, the others being Wolverine and Iceman. The game served as a bridge between the end of X2 and the beginning of The Last Stand. The game's ending would give the reason as to why Kurt would not be in the third movie. He did not like violence and left the X-Men to live a peaceful life. In reality, though, Alan Cummings simply hated the makeup he had to wear and didn't want to do it again. To think, it took a video game to explain why a popular character did not return in the next movie. It wouldn't be until X-Men Apocalypse that Nightcrawler would return, played by Game of Thrones actor Cody Smith McPhee. Fact 6. Did you know that two actors who have played James Bond appeared in the Pink Panther franchise? To begin with, there was a spoof movie made in 1967 based on Ian Fleming's novel Casino Royale, in which the main James Bond was played by David Niven, who attempts to misguide an evil spy organization by employing a collection of other spies to pretend to be James Bond. Niven appeared in three Pink Panther films, where he played a dashing jewel thief named Charles Lytton. Lytton was supposed to be the main character of the first Pink Panther film before Peter Sellers became a superstar playing Inspector Clouseau. Sellers also appeared in the original Casino Royale playing one of the fake Bonds. In Curse of the Pink Panther, Roger Moore, who played James Bond in seven films, made a cameo as Inspector Clouseau himself, having undergone extensive plastic surgery to make himself look like Roger Moore. This cameo was filmed while Moore was on a break from filming his Bond film Octopussy, which was released in 1983, the same year as Curse of the Pink Panther. Fact 7. Did you know that there is only one game in the Medal of Honor series that is not a first-person shooter? The year 2002 saw the release of a port of Medal of Honor Underground for the Game Boy Advance, which was first released on the original PlayStation in 2000. Like all FPS games on portable systems, especially the Game Boy Advance, the graphics, gameplay, and sound were all something to be desired. Unfortunately, compared to the PS1 counterpart, this port was absolutely terrible in every way. The port suffered from considerable frame rate issues, terrible controls, poor pixel quality for enemies, and an ear-splitting conversion of the game's soundtrack. Underground on the GBA would end up being so bad that the next portable entry in the series, Medal of Honor Infiltrator, got rid of the first-person perspective altogether in favor of a top-down view. Infiltrator is the only game in the franchise to make this gameplay switch. Fact 8. Did you know that singer Pink was featured on the soundtrack to the first Happy Feet movie and then went on to be in Happy Feet 2, replacing an actress who had recently died? One of the songs that plays in the opening credits to the first Happy Feet movie is Tell Me Something Good by Ewan McVicker, which is briefly performed by Grammy Award winner Pink. In the movie itself, the lead female penguin Gloria was played by Brittany Murphy. Murphy sadly passed away before the production on Happy Feet 2 was to begin, and Pink was selected to replace her. She was credited under her real name, Alicia Moore, and it was her first foray into voice acting. Fact 9. Did you know that the famous mirror gag from the Marx Brothers comedy Duck Soup was shot as a silent scene? The 1933 comedy classic Duck Soup starring the Marx Brothers had a famous gag where Groucho Marx and Harpo Marx were performing the same exact movements thinking that they were looking into a mirror, while also being dressed in the same clothes. Though the whole movie is a talking film, this particular sequence was shot without sound because the entire crew kept laughing, which in hindsight was absolutely no surprise. This gag has now become one of the most famous scenes for which the Marx Brothers were known for, with Harpo even repeating it years later with Lucille Ball for an episode of I Love Lucy. Fact 10. Did you know that an actor who appeared in the first Hulk movie was arrested for drunk driving during the film's post-production? 
Nick Nolte, who played the scheming father of Bruce Banner, David Banner, in Ang Lee's 2003 Hulk movie, is also known for his performances in films such as The Prince of Tides, Cape Fear, Down and Out in Beverly Hills, and Affliction. Nolte is also known for his bad boy reputation and troubles with substance abuse. He was arrested by the California Highway Patrol in September 2002 for a suspicion of driving under the influence. His now infamous mugshot shows the very same hairstyle that he had grown out for his role of David Banner in Hulk, which he had just finished filming by that time. He was ultimately sentenced to three years probation and checked into rehab. It was later reported that Nolte was not drunk, but rather under the influence of the date rape drug GHB, which he apparently had been using for years without incident. <sighs> Yikes. Following his arrest, Nolte has claimed that he's been clean ever since. Oh, I certainly hope so. And here's today's trivia question. This one goes out to a friend of mine, Babsy Wolf, who is perhaps the biggest fan of Daisy Duck that I know. Daisy has just celebrated her 83rd anniversary, making her first appearance in the Donald Duck cartoon, Mr. Duck Steps Out, on June 7th, 1940. Ever since then, she has been both Donald's love interest and a sassy comic foil, as she has absolutely no time for his frequent temper tantrums. Damn, she looks really good for 83, don't you think? Some Disney fans, though, tend to forget that there was a prototype female duck character as a romantic interest for Donald before Daisy came along. My question to you is, which Donald Duck cartoon first featured a female love interest for him, and what was her name? And there we go for this episode. I hope you all enjoyed it, and definitely stay tuned for more stuff in the lead-up to Anthrocon at the end of the month. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and ring the bell to be notified for future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time!